morning to our press webinar about the results of our ESME impact assessment for COVID-19. We want to share the results and also the actions we, we um, worked out out of the results and uh, we start directly with our president Ivan Stefanitz who will hold the general introduction. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Horst, and good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Bernil Weiss, who initiated this survey, and also all the colleagues who participated. I think this survey showed that uh, SMEs have been really heavily affected. Uh, actually, this survey we activated from the end of March uh, until the end of April, and uh, over 900 SMEs participated from uh, 13 countries. Uh, the results showed that 90% uh, of uh, SMEs have been um, affected, what we expected, and particularly the issue is uh, the access to credit and uh, the liquidity issue, of course. 25% uh, of SMEs, they are saying they uh, have to basically fire employees and 25% also uh, showed uh, the troubles that they have uh, they had to cut some um, employment contracts uh, heavily. Uh, only 11% of SMEs, uh, they expressed uh, the will to continue more than one year, which is quite frightening result. And uh, altogether, uh, we see that 71% of SMEs, uh, they need, uh, first of all, financial help. So uh, the result shows that uh, SMEs are in really, really very difficult situation across the Europe. And um, first of all, liquidity is the issue. Secondly, it is the issue of uh, taxes and administrative rules. And the last but not least, uh, they proposed more flexibility on the uh, labor market. So basically everything what we are doing uh, we can see that uh, we just uh, have to stress out our activities and um, the result uh, showed the need for immediate action. I have to say that SME Europe uh, is very active, not only in terms of organization of web webinars, but I'm happy to say that uh, immediately at the beginning of crisis, we asked the European Commission, particularly Madam President Ursula von der Leyen, that uh, SMEs should be included in the first financial aid, and it was the case. Now I think it is the challenge that this aid will come through national governments uh, directly uh, to the SMEs, to the people who need help, and uh, we will focus on that in uh, next our activities. Thank you. Pernille Weiss, you were the initiator of the survey of SME Europe and also the driving force behind of it. Why we, why we need this survey as SME Europe and what was your reaction of the results of in, in Denmark, please? Hmm. I may be the first one who got the idea, but as I uh, then shortly after that uh, called uh, Ivan, uh, I, he agreed uh, and he also uh, liked the idea that SME Europe uh, must reach out to every SME uh, in the whole union uh, to ask them uh, how are you doing? Uh, what's at stake? Uh, what do you need uh, to get a, a broad picture and also an in-depth uh, picture of what are the uh, different member states doing? Uh, what can we learn from each other? And how can SME Europe uh, articulate what is needed and what is specifically uh, uh, do, doing, uh, uh, making trouble uh, in, uh, in SMEs and to follow uh, the SMEs around in Europe over this uh, long time of uh, very challenging uh, times. So that was the intention. Uh, also to, uh, to tell uh, SMEs that SME Europe is your, um, is your uh, uh, organization to go to, uh, who knows what's going on and is very quick in the reply on what can then be done and who's doing what. So that was the intention. And of course, uh, I, uh, since I took the initiative, uh, I had 
uh, I've used my contacts back home in Denmark to launch it uh, in my Danish network. So I wasn't surprised that a lot of Danish uh, enterprises, they uh, actually uh, took down uh, the survey and, and put in their answers. And uh, so of course I'm, I'm happy and grateful for that. And what I see is that um, it is very, very relevant and needed that uh, politicians and political institutions, they reach out and open up for a dialogue, for a, a, a place to, 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 to contact. Uh, and that was appreciated very much from uh, the Danish SMEs and also for the industry organizations uh, back home in, in Denmark, because it's an extra tool to know exactly what's going on, but also to, to take out misunderstandings about uh, local measures uh, also. It's a way of uh, developing a dialogue where you can ask uh, and bring in ideas uh, also. That was very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. What I also learned is that uh, digital transformation is needed of Europe because there are many Danish enterprises who have uh, put in their uh, uh, their answers uh, to our survey and that tells us that uh, some countries are more in the front of uh, using digital tools in uh, their businesses. Uh, so we must also um, take care that we don't think that uh, the, the survey data is uh, reliable and telling the whole truth of what's going on around in, uh, in Europe's uh, many, many, many different SMEs. And we must also remember those who are not that digital yet. I think it's a, it's a very good approach. It's the EPP approach closer to the people, but don't lose the picture for the broad uh, exactly. um, framework. I think this is, this is regional and global. And I, I think this is important. Thank you very much in the name of SM Europe again for this initiative. Mm -hmm. And now we're coming to Mr. Waban, who will give us a perspective from Sweden because everybody expecting that it's a special situation. What is your results and impressions? Please, Mr. Jürgen Barbon, floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Horst, and it is correct. The result from Sweden is uh, a bit different from the general results. And this, of course, um, has to do with the strategy from, the, from, the, from Sweden uh, to combat COVID-19. Uh, since the strategy, is, it is a bit different. We, we do not have total lockdown in Sweden, and therefore we have seen that it, uh, it, the results has been slightly better uh, for the SMEs in Sweden. Nevertheless, it is in a very alarming situation, and most of the SMEs are in a very distressed situation. Um, as you know, shops and restaurants and hotels and businesses in general, they are open, uh, but consumer behavior has changed dramatically. Um, from the Swedish result, we can see that 80% says that their uh, businesses have, have been affected negatively. We can see that uh, a quarter of the businesses says that their turnover on an annual basis will decrease by 50% or more. And uh, one of the most alarming um, uh, findings of this issue, of this survey, is that 50% of all the SMEs says that they do not have liquidity for two months, 50%. Meaning that uh, half of the restaurants, half of the hair captors, half of the uh, hotels, half of the show shops, everything, half of them will be closed in, in June. So uh, uh, while the strategy from all of the European countries to combat COVID-19 has been to flatten the curve, and I'm sure this is a correct strategy out of a health issue, this is a very dramatic uh, thing for SMEs, since it prolongs the, uh, the crisis for the small and medium-sized enterprises. And now, of course, uh, governments all over Europe has to do it utmost to save those businesses in order to save jobs. Um, and that is, main, 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 that is the main issue here. There has to be more, more uh, action from governments and from uh, the European institutions. Thank you, Horst. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Uh, financial aid, I think, is in the focus. It's necessary. And we have already measures 
uh, in the uh, mentioned, but now Mrs. Isabel Benyomea, what we want to concrete that member states in the European Union is doing to this financial aid for SMEs. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Horst, and, and congratulations on, on this great this great survey, which I think it's is uh, very useful and it came very in, in a very important moment for, for SMEs uh, all around Europe. I, 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 I listen to the Swedish uh, case and then I, listen, I, I think of the Spanish case where we had a terrible lockdown for two months and, and we will see, but the, the effects on the SMEs are going to be ter ter terrific and the, the situation will have a huge impact in, in, in employment, which I think is the biggest, the biggest problem that Europe will be facing. In the next in the next three years, so we do need SMEs in order to continue creating jobs in Europe. We need SMEs in order to be able to to continue creating growth in Europe, and unless they have access to finance, unless they are able to survive during this lockdown, and they have enough resources to start again whenever it's possible, that won't be possible. So we really need to focus on how to make it possible for the SMEs, for the self-employment, to have enough finance to survive and then to start it over again. Um, in the survey, there were uh, many, many answers, but there were two options that were clearly reflected. One was uh, regarding the possibility of offering grants, government grants, and the other one is helping to have access to credit on the, on the financial institutions and see how to guarantee those credits. So we need to enforce measures at the European level, but also at, uh, the member states have to do the same in order to be able to make it easier, make it accessible, the finance for SMEs. But there's a, a big question that is also on the table and we need to bear that in mind is that many SMEs weren't in the best uh, economical situation before the crisis and perhaps they were not they are not in shape to survive so the big question is to identify those SMEs which have the, the characteristics the circumstances that will allow them to survive and to be able to continue after this lockdown so the first outcome would be how important is access to finance because we need to bear in mind that only, only if the SMEs have access to finance, they're able to maintain the jobs and they will be able to create new jobs. And I do uh, uh, focus very much on the idea of jobs because we, we know that after this huge uh, health crisis, there will come a social crisis and the best social policy is creating jobs. So we do need them. So we need to make sure that we, from the European perspective, develop the right tools to access finance for SMEs, but we need to put also pressure on the member states in order to guarantee there's both the idea of grants and the idea of how to guarantee the credits from the financial institutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we're coming to Julio Winkler. Financial aid is not the only tool. It's also about tax and grants. Please, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you very much, host. Good morning to everybody. First of all, let me congratulate SME Europe of the EPP for this uh, great work and our colleague Pernil Weiss for initiating uh, the survey. Then uh, let me say a word of thank you to all the SMEs who responded to our, uh, to our uh, survey, more than 900 SMEs. That's a very important uh, figure. Also, a special thanks for SMEs in my uh, certain uh, uh, constituency, uh, of course, Transylvania in uh, Romania. Then, uh, uh, of course, we need uh, support measures, and just to continue the line of them, uh, support has to come from European Union level, but also support has to come from governments. And uh, as we see very clearly, situation is different in various member states. Also, the fiscal capacity is different in the member states and also the possibility of governments of granting uh, uh, aid is, uh, is different. This is when, where the European Union comes in and this is where our recovery plan, which we discussed last week in the European Parliament also, will play a very important role. Now uh, about uh, governments. Uh, I think that uh, one of the ways which uh, have been mentioned by many SMEs uh, is uh, having tax cuts or having tax deferrals. Because of course that the, the burden that, uh, that is on the SMEs comes partly from uh, taxation 
And uh, 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 as, as it was just said by, by our colleague Isabel, jobs is a very important uh, aspect. Uh, safeguarding the jobs and the capacity in the second half of the year of creating new jobs instead of the jobs that have been lost. So, uh, so uh, uh, tax cuts uh, could be good policies. Uh, it depends uh, on, uh, on each member state and of course it uh, should not at European Union level should not uh, create a competition because we need our uh, our internal market to be to be as uh, as uh, um, functional as possible and then uh, uh, another issue about funding about uh, all the smes asked uh, have responded that they are in problems with liquidity so uh, so uh, uh, funding is very important but it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, in any way possible. We need simplification. And this is, uh, first of all, in the hands of, uh, of uh, member states' authorities, of uh, banking institutions, of administrative authorities, because the, uh, the mechanisms to grant fundings have to be simplified. The signal was correct at the European Union level because the European Commission introduced, among the first measures, the flexibility. So now flexibility has to be rightly used, but in, uh, uh, in a manner that does not uh, uh, defer uh, uh, supplementary burden on SMEs. We need simple, clear procedures and fast tracking of those procedures. Back to you, Ross. Thank you, Mr. Winkler. And uh, we ca this is not the last tool we have here in, in this um, financial aspect. Investments. Mr. Stefanitz. What we can say about this, what should be the targets, how to settle investment here in Europe in a good way, please. Unmuting. Yes, sir, it's absolutely a very good point and I can only reconfirm all the points which were made by my colleagues, simplification of administration tax cut and liquidity. This is the crucial, we should not forget it and then this is our ongoing work. But uh, after this uh, crisis situation, we have to think about future. And then if we think about future, we have to think about investments. I think the major tool for next uh, investment package will be multi-annual financial framework. We are discussing this issue at the European Parliament. The uh, European Parliament uh, is proposing to double um, basically European budget uh, for next seven years from 2021 until 2027. Now we know it will be a big discussion between uh, Parliament, Commission and Member States because we propose major shift. And uh, this should be a so-called uh, Marshall Plan for Europe. This uh, should be really major investment package where SMEs should play a crucial role. If we talk about digital agenda, if we talk about Green Deal, all the aspects um, uh, must include uh, the access to new investment capital for SMEs uh, because, uh, as we know, they play a major role in job creation. So we should not forget about EU Invest and all the packages, but from my point of view, multi-annual financial framework will be the most important package and most important tool for next development of SMEs. Thank you. Thank you. And we're coming to the second large package of, of SMEU's, uh, SME Europe advices or action plan, useful administrative reforms and legal processes. Mr. Winkler, what is the key of, of, of this uh, package? Uh, our uh, survey and also the webinars and debates and discussions organized in the last two months by um, SME Europe only come to confirm something that is a, an evergreen principle, I would say. Uh, it is uh, about reduction of uh, bureaucracy, uh, reduction of red tape, reduction of bureaucratic hurdles towards companies. This is really an evergreen, but is uh, uh, so much more important now in the times of crisis. Uh, we have lockdown, we have the social distancing rules, we have all the uh, or majority of administrative uh, offices and institutions which are working online. We have a huge number of administrative obligations which simply can be postponed or maybe can be rethinked 
we have this huge possibility now to to uh, introduce digitization and to help uh, companies uh, reduce their bureaucratic hurdle. And uh, uh, if you would pose the question to an SME, maybe what you prefer, a certain amount of uh, funding or a certain amount of reduction of your burden, reduction of your duties, reduction of your uh, uh, annoying obligations, then I'm sure that many of the SMEs would prefer Please make my life easier, please make my life simpler, and let me do my business and uh, not uh, uh, bother to, to do uh, often quite useless bureaucracy. So this is an evergreen, but it's much more important now in times of crisis and in, uh, in uh, our preparation to start recovery, reduce bureaucracy, reduce red tape, gold plating, and all the associated hurdles towards SMEs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's also the cheapest actions and it's in our own hands. And uh, I think we're coming to another question. So what can administrative reforms do again, uh, for the labor market against unemployment? Ms. Benyomea, um, what it means for the labor market if we do reforms? Yes, uh, thank you. Following what Mr. Winkle was just saying, um, if you ask uh, any businessman or woman in the European level, they were asked, first of all, to have uh, access to liquidity, then to have a, a, simply, a very simple way of doing things and get rid of bureaucracy. But on the, on the third, they would say we need to have a very flexible labor market. In, in, three different, in, three, in three different areas. First of all, the cost of hiring people. We need to reduce the cost of hiring people. Then we need to have a fle flexible market because if you make it very complicated to hire and very expensive to hire, especially during the crisis, who would dare to get in, in, this, in this process of hiring new people whenever it's a burden, a huge burden. So we need to make it cheaper, we need to make it flexible. And of course, the third one, we need to really, uh, from the European perspective, create the single market so that we can have people moving from one member state to another. And for that, we need to have the recognitions, the recognition of qualification among the European Union. And that's something that the SMEs are also requesting. So having a very flexible labor market is the best way to create more employment. And we need to get rid of the idea that having a very rigid labor market protects employment. It's absolutely the, absolutely the other way. And we really need to do both from the European perspective, but this is the duty of the member states is their obligation to uh, make a flexible uh, a labor market, taking into account that right now, most of the employers are thinking on how to reduce their uh, employment sheet in, and we need to get them thinking on how to hire new people in a few months. So flexibility, reducing the cost and recognition of qualifications. Thank you, Horst. Thank you very much. I think this is really the time for reforms in a good way. Every crisis has also chances. You mentioned already, Penelope Weiss, that digitalization is needed at SMEs level. But uh, we need it not only there, also the governments and also the European Union need to be uh, transformed to digitalization. We have one point uh, in administration. What do you think we should do there? Well, there are two very, very important issues. And uh, the first one is uh, digitalization uh, to be, be a success. Uh, you need skills. You need uh, uh, the administrations, the SMEs, employees to take on board and to learn how to use uh, digital tools and software. Uh, it's, 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 it's not only something that you uh, do from one day to another. We know that there are a lot of, uh, of uh, employees uh, who need to be re-skilled into digital and also managers and, and owners of SMEs who need to go uh, in the digital age uh, and, and that we have to prioritize resources and also uh, a stage kind of implementation that is suitable and uh, for every uh, a different branch and, and industry. Uh, so that is very important, the skills. This is a process for including also education, it's only not a technical question. 
Uh, one other very important point we have in our fight against um, bureaucracy and also to introduce reforms, the one in and two out principle. Please, can you explain mm -hmm. that, what it means? That is, uh, at least coming from EPP and coming from Denmark, it's very, very important to have this principle uh, one in two out, uh, but also that if you can take two out without replacing with one, you should also do that. Uh, I, uh, I personally is a very uh, big fan of the Juncker, um, uh, big on big and small uh, on small. And uh, I would like to see, and I, I, I also feel that that is uh, in the spirit of SME Europe, that we still uh, hold these uh, principles of uh, big on big and small and small. And if you can take two out, you don't have to put one in uh, that mm. we see and integrate uh, the single market even more and deeper to make life simple uh, for the SME so that they can focus on making business and making money. Thank you. That means it's not a dogma, it's an idea and even less is more. So, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, and here we're coming to Jürgen Warborn, the internal market of, of Europe. Is this now time to fulfill his destiny? Mr. the floor is yours. Yes, I think we should uh, come back to business as usual as soon as possible. Um, unfortunately, the internal, uh, the internal market has been hurt in this process and um, we haven't been able to keep the single market open uh, like we should during a crisis. The, one of the most uh, distressing situation about this is the personal uh, protective equipment that was uh, hindered of, of exporting from some e European countries to other countries. Um, this, of course, this is not the European solidarity that we would like to have when we, uh, when we restrict exports. The, 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 the single market is the heart of the European idea that uh, both uh, uh, products, services, people, money should be able to flow over borders. Then, um, so we have to come back to this as soon as possible. And unfortunately, there are still, um, depending on how you count, seven, 10 or 11 countries that have export, uh, export restrictive measures still within the European market. So those has to be taken away. And I think the commission has work to do here to make sure that all the member states um, uh, act according to our common rules. Then the other part of this is, of course, the, the world trade, because as we have seen that the internal market does not work perfectly during the crisis, this is the case with world trade as well. Uh, this was a, a problem before the corona crisis, but it has been uh, accelerated during the crisis. Um, I think it is very important to go back to the multilateral rules-based trading system that, uh, that has given so many benefits, not least for Europe and the member states and the citizens of Europe. One thing that I am a bit afraid of now is that we are talking about uh, um, only buying European goods and being protective, uh, protectionists, uh, and so on. I think that is uh, totally the wrong way to go uh, for Europe as a whole, for citizens of Europe and for businesses of Europe. We have to have this open free trade thinking when it comes to businesses. One thing, and the last thing I'd like to mention here is the discussion on the di diversification of supply chains. I can understand that and I think that it is probably wise for some businesses to rethink how they source their, their goods. But I do not think that this should be a process driven by politicians. This is something that the market should act on their own. And if politicians hinder businesses from sourcing from different countries, I think that would be totally the wrong way to go. One thing we should do, as my very last thing, is to make sure that we have more free trade uh, agreements 
so that um, so that we um, give the possibilities for people for businesses to source their uh, their products from from different parts of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jürgen. I think it's very important that we going not in the wrong way because it will have a domino effect, and we have a lockdown of of the economy worldwide. I think it's a crucial moment, and I think good that you are fighting for, for this open markets in the benefits of SMEs. And we're coming now to the last part uh, of our uh, of our um, uh, packages: investment in infrastructure, in uh, education and research. Panilla Weiss, um, you were also shadow rapporteur of the West Water Management, and in our action plan. We want to have also massive investments because there was also a backlog in the past. Uh, is the time right now to do this? And in fact, uh, is this where we should really put our efforts now? Please. Of course, uh, it is very, very important to see the, uh, the green transition together with the recovery package. And there, as you say, there is a lot of infrastructure uh, investments uh, that is needed for our climate and for the coherency uh, and the growth uh, of, the, of, of the union, uh, where uh, especially uh, uh, water systems, both in, uh, in wastewater, but uh, uh, the whole water um, infrastructure uh, is needed. Uh, there are too much water being wasted uh, uh, under its uh, transportation, uh, and we could really help our uh, it, um, both uh, the the climate and the environment if we focus on on the water management both and also in an energy uh, perspective there can be uh, uh, you can harvest energy from the way that you treat your wastewater and we know that water is a scarce resource somewhere in europe there is too much water in, in the future and other where in uh, europe there will be less water so we need the w the water to circulate like uh, also an energy resource um, for the whole union. And then there is energy efficiency for the, of the building stuff. That's a new uh, report that I'm working uh, on, mm -hmm. where you also can see a lot of uh, recovery um, uh, uh, um, healing uh, after the corona to be done because you create jobs immediately if you do what you can actually do and also have promised to do. Uh, regarding um, uh, uh, energy efficiency of uh, the building stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you focus on buildings and water, you can really create a lot of uh, jobs and a lot of change uh, for the climate. And in those two aspects, you don't need to invent the wheel. We do have the technologies. Mm -hmm. We actually know what to do. So mm -hmm. that's very, very important. Thank you. It's a long-term investment, but it's not only consumptions. Thank you very much. This is, I think, it's also, if you say, it's, it's uh, justice to the next generations also. If you use Exactly, it. exactly. And also it's a way of, of uh, making uh, the role model uh, of Europe in the green transition very visible. Mm -hmm. when, we, uh, when we work on our own infrastructure, our own societal models, we show the rest of the world how it's done. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are being also a living laboratory uh, um, yeah, of also goods that can be exported. That's very, very important. The next point, what is very important also for the EPP, rural areas. We see mm -hmm. now the COVID-19 uh, crisis, pandemic, home office is everywhere, but for this you need infrastructure, internet. I really do hope that uh, the uh, the Commission's plan and the uh, the agreement on the MFF and recovery package uh, has uh, the finance for that aspect. That's very very important. Also, that we, in terms of digital transformation, uh, uh, digital transformation, that we don't leave anyone behind. And especially there, we have uh, um, a rural area uh, challenge to face. Uh, how to solve that? Because now we know we have to be able to work remotely. And also we know that that will, can change the, the perception on, on where the, do, can jobs grow. If the digital uh, uh, infrastructure is, is there, you, then it opens up for a, a lot of new possibilities for, for more remote areas of Europe. Mr. Winkler, Julio, uh, you were already also fighting for Erasmus, Erasmus Plus already. You write, wrote a letter to the Commission 
what are here our positions? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I think if uh, there is something sensational that happened in the last two months, then I think uh, digitization is the topic. Digitization is the issue. It's a huge leap forward that happened in the last uh, 60 days uh, in our uh, uh, professional life, in our social life, in our education uh, styles. Uh, home office has changed. E-learning, which uh, 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 where was a topic of huge debate uh, six months ago, or the, the whole conference call system and the, the way of making business. So uh, what we need now is to be sure that everybody has the right digital skills. So everybody should receive the right digital education. Uh, either we are speaking about youngsters who uh, seemingly have those skills in a natural way, but of course they have to learn. But also we have to think about uh, all the uh, uh, demographies. So I think lifelong learning will be re-thinked uh, uh, and we need the skills, the, the digital skills for entrepreneurs, for uh, people in rural areas, people who want to become entrepreneurs, uh, or uh, uh, people who want to participate in business life. Then, uh, of course, uh, how to do it. And I think here the idea of the public-private partnership is very, very important. Of course, governments have their role. National budget has its role to have digital infrastructure. We could see now in the last two months that, uh, that uh, uh, broadband is not given, that the digital connectivity is not... Uh, uh, equal in all European regions. We have better and, and, and not so good uh, situation in many regions. Of course, uh, 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 when we speak about digital transformation, we have to speak about the role of European Union. And you have mentioned Erasmus, but also the EU and the European Commission through the cohesion funds has a huge role in building up and bettering the, the digital infrastructure, the connectivity, it's all about connectivity. So finally, it's about the internal market. We need a digital internal market truly uh, functioning in the European Union. And uh, finally, let me just make outside the, outside the survey, but inside this issue of digitization, let me just make a personal comment. I think that also the last 60 days have learned us that technology is very important but technology cannot replace certain things. And I think that technology helps us doing business, helps us uh, uh, learn, helps us making politics, but cannot replace the uh, human interaction. We see also after 60 days, uh, very frightening forms of alienation. We see also that, that, that direct human interaction cannot be, cannot be replaced. So, huge accent on digitization, huge hopes in, 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 in digital connectivity and in technology in general, but still keep in mind that also learning, also business, the handshake will not be replaced ever and, uh, and the direct human interaction will not be uh, replaced because it's the basis of trust and you cannot make business outside trust. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think this is a good closing of, of this press webinar because, yes, humans are living from interaction as social beings and business is living from trust and trust is from personal contact. I think this is a good thing. Daniel Weiss, you are a promoter of, of innovation, the Green Deal. Why it's important? Is this the right time to, to say uh, the Green Deal is, um, is, is now still in the center of attention? Do we need this to invest in this innovation or we should be focused now to save the, the industry? Is this the wrong approach or why SMU wants to, to invest in this uh, branch? Please. Well, we know from, uh, from the, uh, the international, the global competences uh, that it's very important for EU to be ever innovative. Uh, and do it also cross-sectional <coughs> or, or crossover sections. Uh, 
that's uh, that's the uh, name of the game. That if you want to stay uh, in the front position globally, you know, you must prioritize innovation. And there, uh, the Green uh, Deal, the European Green Deal, is a kind of an, an overarching umbrella. That if we want to live up to the generations contract. Uh, to give a better world to our children and their children, we need to combine uh, innovation as a tool uh, to provide uh, the climate change needed, also to live up to the agreements of the Paris Agreement and the promises we made to be uh, CO2 neutral um, at least uh, by 2050. So innovation is just uh, a very good recipe uh, every day to start all over with uh, in every branch, in every uh, sector, and we should support that from SME Europe, of course, uh, but also uh, from, from the EP and from the EPP. In the end, this green investment is also a business where you can make money. I think this is, you can do something good and you can also put something for the economy. Well, that's the uh, ecology of society. Um, it's, uh, you can use the analogy of a beautiful garden that you, uh, you have to work with that every every day. There are flowers and trees dying, and you have to plant new and cut them to keep them growing. That's uh, that's the that's the simple method for of uh, how to deal with innovation, business uh, modeling, and and the uh, and the climate. Green investment, green technology, and innovation can be also a chance. We should not forget this that there is a, a chance that we also have to get in new markets. It is necessary to, to fight the climate change, not to forget during the crisis, but in an intelligent way. And I think this is the smart way we as in Europe wants to go in, in this during this crisis, smart not to violent SMEs, but to give them new chances. And I think to summarize it now uh, short, we thinking that the market is, is working, he's healthy in himself, he is healing. We believe in an entrepreneurship, and we want to help for a restart, but only in so necessary as, as needed, because freedom is the best medicine for entrepreneurs. And I give now the closing word to Mr. Ivan Stefanitz. Uh, thank you, Horton. Thank you, all my dear colleagues, for participation. Uh, yeah, maybe just last points, because many great points have been raised uh, by all of you. But the last point is that Really, I'd like to stress out the importance of a single market, as Jürgen has mentioned already, because single market is hurted and many, many countries, they prefer protectionistic uh, rules and basically they close the borders. Now, it's important to come back to the functioning single market. It's important to coordinate borders opening uh, in the European Union. That's the call also as uh, SM Europe. We have asked European Commission to do that. And I do believe as uh, soon as possible, we'll come back to the functioning single market and we will use all, all the opportunities. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, survey. Thank you very much for this uh, webinar. And I looking forward to work uh, with you also uh, in order to improve the situation of our SMEs. Thank you. And don't forget to follow us on our website, on the social media, and follow our members who are active for you, for our SMEs in Europe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.